All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to Cause Streams TV. As always, I am Cause, and we are done season four, week fifteen of Dragonflight, and we are going to talk about the pre-patch event, and that maybe I was wrong in a previous video when I said leveling needs this. Let's jump into it and let's get going. So way back, if you guys remember, I posted a video about Mop Remix, and Mop Remix leveling with the mailbox tricks is actually really beneficial. You do a few days of heroics and the daily quest, and then you get level 25, you jump into MSV, and now with the XP nerf, you actually only need to do about one MSV and one more heroic after that, and then you can open the mailbox and blast yourself up to 70. Well, you know what? With this pre-patch event, and I love seeing this, you can actually go from level 60 to 70 in under an hour. I think my best time was about 48 minutes. Uh, I started actually running speedrun splits as an add-on to see how long leveling actually takes. It was about 47 minutes for 47, 48 minutes for my best uh, 60 to 70 split. And because of that, we've managed to get a whole bunch of level 70s from just the event. Now, of course, I've done the kind of the AFK farming thing. So when you can actually tag the events, some of you may see when you're doing the events, there's people up in the sky just sitting on their mounts. Well, I'm one of those people. It's one of those things that during the workday, you can park yourself in, above one of those uh, events and actually just let it keep respawning searing gorge is probably the best one because in searing gorge the events are very close you've got stitches hogger and the pumpkins all in a very close vicinity and then you have the southern versus terran mill right beside it and then hakar right so though that those respawn so quickly that's actually a really good zone to level very very fast because you could do the pumpkins watch hogger die and quickly jump over as soon as the, the memory is done right so the radiant echoes and the radiant memory quest is fantastic i've made the heirloom ring no challenges there but from this event alone Alone, we've managed to level five new level 70 all of which were from level 60 to 70 and one was a monk he went from level 50 to level 70 and actually i did three monks a hunter and a warrior so here they are we've got my draenei cause toes spin my cause iron monk this is the one i'll probably play because i wanted a dark iron dwarf monk and then we also have cause wang chu another draenei this one i made way way back in bfa and he was long and forgotten but with the event why not give them some more levels we also have cause kazin problems this is a hunter that I made way 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 back in the day uh so it is now 70 and then we have my og warrior cause go burr this is the one i made for castle nathria and the one that i was progging with now all of these characters hit level 70 i got them a little bit of gear we went and did under rot and that was five more disappointments in under rot so we still don't have the under rot bout and we're up to 257 attempts currently so this week with all these 70s i've got a lot of running to do and i really really hope i can get that mount so i can go somewhere else to start farming a new dungeon or raid a couple other things to talk about we do have our arcane mage the arcane mage i said last week that i wanted to get up to 70 well here he is i actually did manage to get him up to 70 i'm looking forward to playing him a little bit more and now that the mage is done we also did as i mentioned we got our vulpir and hunter done which is also now level 70 and then we also finished our priest we got the gnome priest up to level 70 as well well so that really finishes my journey in mop remix 14 days left so let's take a quick look at all of the characters we now have in mop remix that will be transferred into retail i used all the extra bronze on them to get the uh their gear upgrade as far as i could so most of them are 346 but we've got the a monk we've got three druids we've got a chamois an orc chamois we've got our hunter we've got our mage one priest two death knights we have a warrior two paladins a rogue and another a warlock so in total we have 15 new characters that will when transferred into retail will either live at level 70 for a long time or over the course of the next expansion will be leveled up to level 80 and used for mount farms everywhere so why did I say that I think I was wrong when I said leveling this in the last video? Well, like, like you just saw, I truly think that this new pre-patch event is the way to level your alts if you've got them just sitting around doing nothing. Any bankers you have, any alts that you've long lost, forgotten. These are now, this is a great time now to get them up to 70 while doing the world event. And the transmog actually isn't that bad. I kind of like that the transmog that you get with the, the Dalaran Defender especially on a draenei i think it looks great as you saw in some of my character select streams it is so fitting 
But let, with that, let's jump into the meat and potatoes of the video. Let's talk about some of the characters that we worked on last week. Um, as always, we will talk about the Paladin. We will talk about the DK. And then we've got a couple extras that we ran keys on to do the weekly for the extra booleans. And we got a couple other things to talk about outside of that. We got some new mounts. We got four new mounts this week. So I'm excited to show you guys those. But let's quickly first jump into the Paladin. Let's take a look at his gear. Um, from last week, he started at 517.19. And we did actually get a bunch of upgrades. We didn't actually get new gear but we did upgrade the gear we had so let's take a look at first starting with the neck piece it is mythic track we went from 522 to 528 his legs went from 512 to 515 small upgrade but still an upgrade his shoulders went from 506 to 512 522 and then we upgraded the feet to five from 522 to 525 now additionally one other thing that we did we did additionally one other thing with it we did with the paladin he was taking to one of the heroic alt raids that uh, the guild was doing so because of that i had the 493 weapon but i had no shield for prot so what we did is we went in and we bought the shield with some of the booleans that we had and then we upgraded it right up to 528 because it was at a decreased cost because we already upgraded a two-handed weapon to max and then we already bought the one-handed weapon from farak a long time ago so we upgraded that to 528 as well so those are two other upgrades we had on the paladin and after all of the upgrades the paladin finishes the week at 519.13 so just under a two item level upgrade we still have not broke the 520 mark but he feels fantastic when doing keys he will have a few uh, vault slots this week. He'll have a full heroic three slot from raid, and then he'll have two because I only did about two keys. So let's quickly jump in and talk about the IO that he got this week. And just a reminder, you're seeing last week's affixes because I'm recording this video before the, before the patch, before the reset, as always, just to be able to get in and get my items faster. But here we are with the pallies io for the week he started at 2605 last week and he finishes the week at 2726 121 io increase on the paladin paladin it felt really good to get some keys done i didn't do much on him just i am back at work now so my time is limited i can't really play during the day anymore uh but the keys that we did complete we did an 11 no code offensive for 38 points we did a 12 alterac validity for 17 points we did an 11 bracken hide hollow for 35 points this key was actually two chested that's why we got a good amount of keys out of that and then we also finally went from a two to a nine ulderman with 31 points and that was a three chest so overall i'm very happy with how the paladin did last week and his dps has increased significantly since i've started playing him i feel much more confident and secure in how i'm playing so i will continue to play him moving on into next week all right and with that let's jump into opening the paladin's vault we're opening it in red spec we'll have three raid slots and three mythic plus slots let's see how he's doing okay we've got manic grief torch kind of cool i can play with that we have hero track legs which we already have we have 509 shoulders so nothing really fancy out of the raid vault slots but let's move down to the mythic plus we have Crit haste wrists that we could use mythic track we have a waste piece that is also crit mastery and then we have a mythic track chest piece so the biggest upgrade i feel is going to come the biggest stat upgrade is going to come from this chest here even though manic reap torch would be fun to play with and would help with damage in keys i do feel like taking the mythic chest piece gives me the most amount of strength stam and secondary stats and we can also turn it catalyze it into a piece of tier so we're going to do that we're going to go upgrade it right away so throwing that on before we catalyze it we go from 519.13 to 519.5 and we have a 12 ruby life pools to start the week fortified storming and bursting definitely a very good push week and something else we're going to be doing on the paladin is he has a ton of booleans and with the pre-patch already being here and with war within just around the corner i'm not going to be buying actual gear with these booleans i want to use these nine booleans and buy him some transmog we're going to start off by buying the farak shield i absolutely love how this shield looks so we're going to be picking up that one and that is it. That is all of the, the bullions that we had on our Paladin. So we have a bunch of new shield transmogs, which obviously will be mostly used on the warrior, but I'm very happy with these. We picked up a couple bows for the hunter. And that's it for transmogs. Most will be used on the warrior or the paladin since both of them tank. But I'm happy with those because now we can use the other bullions on the warrior to buy weapons or anything else I find interesting. 
So what is the plan on the Paladin this week? Well, with me having limited time to run a lot of Mythic Plus keys, I will still try to do at least four on the Paladin, bump his IO up just a little more. Let's see if we can break 2800. I will be doing the Heroic Raid again this week. I thought it went fairly well last week and it does give me the extra aspect and worm crest that I need to be able to upgrade my gear. So maybe we'll do a little bit of that. And then really we'll see where that takes us. So that's what we'll, we'll be doing on the Paladin again. And things are starting to wind down. So we'll maybe a little less gameplay going into the following last two weeks of the expansion okay and next let's jump into the other main character the blood death knight i will continue to sing praises for the changes that blizzard has done to the death knight class in general it has made this class feel so incredibly good and so incredibly beefy in keys i just i absolutely love it last week we finished a bunch of 15 keys we got a ton of io we actually got 135 io from where we started with we'll go over that in a second but overall i just i absolutely love how the dk feels i've been doing high keys i've been doing crazy big pulls bosses aren't too scary everything they've done to the dk feels feels absolutely amazing this is one of my favorite classes it always has been the dk that i play on has been my wrath of the lich king dk that i created way back in the days so i was tanking with this in dragonflight season one and two and i really disliked it it felt very weak it felt you very quickly fell over to one shots all the time compared to what it was in shadowlands so going from shadowlands to season one and two in dragonflight it just dk was not in the glory that it was in before which commonly happens when you have a meta spec going from one expansion to the other or one season to the other so i'm really happy to see what blizzard has done uh, overall the death knight as always no gear upgrades just because he already has all his maximum items and all his maximum gear so no upgrades to talk about there but like i said let's jump into the io that he's completed and let's take a look at that the dk finished off last week at 3036 so we were at 3036 io we made the joke of getting the 3000 io and we did and now i'm thinking maybe we could push 3200 because this week we finished the week off at 31 71 really good increase 135 io points let's talk about the dungeons that we did so we did a 11 aa originally that's what we started the week off kind of light we put two chests of that we got four points out of it nothing crazy as you can see we actually have a 15 aa done we did time a 15 aa and we got 12 points for that moving on we also timed a 15 Al alterac valley i said that last week it's an it's an azure vault i don't know why i'm saying alterac valley but i am so we got a 15 Azure Vault. This gave us 26 points. We then jumped into an Ulderman. We originally did a 12, which gave us seven points, but then we finished off with a 14 that gave us another six points. We jumped into an 11 Neltheris, which gave us five points. As you can see, we have a 15. When we timed the 15, we had 37 additional points on top of that. We jumped into an 11 Ulderman. As it, you're starting to see a trend here, we do a warm up key and then we jump into the higher key, but we did an 11 Ulderman for seven points. And then we jumped into a 14 Ulderman for an additional six points. And then we finished the week off running a 14 ruby life pools we two chested this key and got 38 points for it very happy with the dk's overall process 31 37 i do feel like this week week 16 it should be possible to push that io up to 3200 i don't see why not there isn't going to be a lot of points we're going to get when we time these at 15 but let's try it anyway and i think just we should be able to get 29 points eke that out to give us the 3200 and i'm sure we can finish off the season around that point so we'll have one more tyrannical week we can push a couple keys just before the early access event goes live so that's the dk with that the dk also has 11 booleans that he needs to use so i'm gonna go buy some transmog and we're gonna take a look at what he picks up all right so quickly let's take a look at what we bought with our 11 booleans on the death knight you're gonna see a trend here i love the shadow flame look and i love the white bows and just white items i don't know why but i absolutely love them so we got the white crossbow for the hunter we've got the war glaive for the demon hunter we've got the fist weapon as well we got both versions we got the white and blue i really like the blue on this one we've got one of the staves i think it's a really cool i think it's the only one i was missing for the t-mog where he also got another war grave the purple one i don't know what it is i really like this color scheme we also got one of the staves that are shadow flame staffs we have a shadow flame weapon the one-handed sword we have a shadow flame gun we have the shadow flame staff again and then we also have the shadow flame mace so as you can see a bit of a trend i really like my shadow flame items i think they look fantastic same with the white the white war glaive and the white crossbow i just i think there's some cool transmogs that can be that can be done with these so that's what we picked up on the dk with his extra booleans 
Okay, and let's jump into the Death Knight's Vault. Uh, we are opening it in on Holy Spec. Let's see what he gets. There'll be no raid, just Mythic Plus slots for him today. Oh, I lied. We did do raid. That's right. We did do a raid for the first few bosses. We got pulled in, so I completely forgot about that. But we have Mythic Track Hands, three of four, which we already have, but these are tier. We have Mythic Track Chess Piece, which is... Uh, we already have a tier chest piece. We could take this and catalyze it, though, but we could also take the hands as they are better stats for us with Haze Verse. We have the Mythic Track Crit Mastery Ring. Huge ring there, but I have the ones I already need. We have a trinket I have never seen before, but we already have our trinkets from booleans and then we also have another chess piece so not really much we can get on the death knight outside of his hands which really just be playing with stats and i don't think it's that critical at this point i'm just going to take the tokens this week let's see what key he gets for us to kick it off of the week and it is a 15 algathar academy i don't know what it is with this key last week we went from a 15 algathar academy to a Neltharis, and then back to an Algathar, and then back to a Neltharis, and then even when we were running low keys, we did the same thing. We got Algathar, and then we went to Neltharis, and then we got Algathar, and went back to Neltharis, and then say, like, I had a different key, so we'd run my Neltharis, and it became an Algathar. So, I don't know what it is. This seems to be a very popular key lately, but that is okay. That's what we're starting the week off with. So what's the plan on the DK this week? As always, I will continue to be running his Mythic Raid on Tuesday nights. We have Raid, we'll be streaming that. And then outside of Raid, we will continue to do keys. I want to get some more 15s across the board for Tyrannical. I'll probably get the ones I need for IO and then maybe kind of take a break, work on some alts. We'll see. Overall, like I said, I'm loving how the DK feels. I'm going to get him ready for the War Within, clean up his bags, clean up his bank, get that in order, clean up his quest logs. So when we jump into the War Within, we are ready to just blast through early access and level as quickly as possible so that's the plan on the dk with this week i am looking forward to blasting some keys definitely and pushing him a little bit in raid and next let's take a look at some of the mounts we acquired this week i'm super excited we got four new mounts this week which kind of make up for running under rod so much and getting nothing let's start off by the two e two mounts we got from the event this week from the pre-patch event using the radiant memories that you get when you buy one of the mounts with for the twenty thousand memories you actually get both the horde and alliance version so here's the horde version it is the remembered wind rider looks just like one of the normal wind riders that you can get but obviously it's got a blue and yellow see-through scheme it's all right i don't think it's anything too fancy and special but i think it's a good looking mount overall so we've got that one and then the other mount you get for the alliance version of the and then the alliance version of the pre-patch event is the remembered golden griffin basically a griffin style mount same color scheme as the wind rider again nothing fancy but it is a plus one to our mount collection and last up, the final two mounts we got. These are both from the trading post, so I didn't work hard for most of my mounts this week, but it is still plus four. It is the Corcron War Saber. This is one of the mounts we got from the trading post, basically your standard War Saber style mount. I do really like the armor on this one. Makes it look really mean. And the axe on the tail looks fantastic. See, I'm really happy with this mount. It's kind of cool, and I will favorite it as a ground mount. And the last mount we got is the Sentinel Warwolf. Again, from the trading post, I really like the white and purple. Like I said, I don't know, this week has been a purple theme thing happening, I've noticed, with the transmogs I bought, etc. But yeah, I really like the white wolf. I think that's really cool with the purple on it. And as always, it has your default wolf special. And here it is overall. Definitely a mount that I would have favorited because I do like it for a ground mount and something that I would use in the future. All right, and a couple bonus vaults this week for you guys. We've got the warrior who did his four mythic keys for the weekly, and I believe I did LFR with him, so let's see what he gets in arm spec. Let's see if there's anything exciting for us. Oh, 486 chest. We actually took the, we actually used a token last week to get the LFR one because we had an LFR token available to us. We have the LFR trinket we're not going to take, and then we also have the LFR, which we're not going to take. So let's see what we get from our mythic vaults. We are looking at the trinket that we most likely will not take. 
and we are looking at a 512 crit haste ring really nice crit but really nothing special from the warrior it's really just you know if we take the ring it's just a stat upgrade it does have crit and haste which both are good for the warrior in terms of damage this trinket would most likely replace ashes of embersol let's just take the ring really it doesn't matter which one we take the warrior isn't a main we're just trying to up his item level as much as possible before next tier And last up, we have our Demon Hunter. We did the four Mythic Dungeons on her as well, just for the weekly quest for the Booleans. Let's take a look at what she gets in her vault. All right, we're looking at 512 Hands. This is a huge upgrade, and it has Avoidance. And then we're looking at 509 Boots. We have the Crafted Boots, so really, like, we can live a little longer with the 486. Let's take these Hands and most likely catalyze them uh, we'll see but we'll take the hands and go from there and that is it that is all what is the plan for this week what are we doing the pre-patch event is live war within is coming in within a couple weeks what is there that we can continue doing in the game well as always we'll do we'll continue to run keys on our characters on our death knight we'll run some keys on our paladin we'll run some keys we'll do some raids we're just gonna hang out and have fun we're gonna do a lot of cleanup that is the plan in mop remix my time is now done so i don't plan on leveling any more characters i don't plan on making any more characters a lot of the mop remix stuff will no longer be in my videos because we're kind of done with that right maybe in the future i'll do a recap or a review because i thought mop remix was a fantastic thing that blizzard added into the game um, outside of that what else we are going to continue to run under Rot. we've got a ton of ults that need to run under Rot this week so i really hope we get them out if we don't i think we'll be up to about 270 attempts by the end of the week i'll let you guys know with the pre-patch event being live i still have some level some alts that i would like to get up to level 70s most are i think i've got two mages at level 40 and then a like one of my auctioneers at level 47 might as well get them up to level 70 because it's so quick so we'll be doing that and, and as always we'll be streaming tuesdays and thursdays so check me out on twitch there's a link to that in the description below and then we'll also be posting some more videos of keys we completed last week actually on tyrannical i think there's an av coming it wasn't the cleanest key but we did time it one of the players was having uh dcs throughout the key and leg spikes so we'll be posting that that's the plan for the week i'm hoping to get some more content out for you guys uh thank you guys so much for watching and tuning in if you haven't yet please hit that like and subscribe button it goes a long way and helps in the algorithm get more of my videos out to you guys as always i hope your week has been fantastic i hope the vault has been good to you and i hope you're enjoying the pre-patch event and what's happening in world of warcraft until next time everybody have a fantastic week we'll see you at the end of week 16 peace out